Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Sessions with Courtney Pollock. Hey Courtney. Hi Heidi. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing well. We're just going to dive right into this episode. Take it away. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know we've been dwelling in the depths of, you know, darkness for a while. You know, it's not quite the heart of darkness, but it's, you know, pretty grim. And, um, uh, but I'm trying to make it as upbeat as possible because, you know, uh, you take the positive uh, when you can, you know, amongst the most dire of situations. You know, there are a lot more dire situations in the world than, you know, being in, in a, in a, imprisoned, you know, incarcerated. Um, and, you know, being in the trenches, you know, uh, fighting for your life, fighting for your country in a futile war that's, you know, politically motivated or economically, all that crap, you know. Ah. And, um, you know, people giving their lives and, you know, sacrificing everything they've got, including their lives, you know, for, for a hopeless cause, or, you know, for, for a for political gain or economic gain, typically, you know. And um, I'm doing time for, you know, for breaking the law, you know, it wasn't... <laughs> wasn't really bad, you know, I was just growing some plants, you know, in something I believed in, and, um, uh, but it, I knew it was against the law, I, you know, uh, it was good while it lasted. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, there's people in there, you know, that have pitiful cases, you know, honestly, they didn't have a good start, they, you know, they didn't. it's all about the man years, as I said before, you know, and. And I'm looking at these, you know, ridiculous sentence. Um, I'm waiting for the DA to uh, get it off his desk. It's been two and a half years, and uh, I finally get called to um, to the to court. You know, they have lowered the charges from ten to ten counts of ten to forty to ten counts of five to forty. I was like, huh, <laughs> and I said, well. You know, to my attorney, what's the, what, what, what are the, um, you know, what's it look like? She said, well, you know, there's, there's no victims. There's no, you know, honestly, it's really, it's just about their getting their, getting their years, you know, and, and, and you're a model prisoner. You have a really good, um, prison file, which means that you have no offenses against you in, in prison. You, you're a model prisoner in terms of, um, you know, being an example to other men and keeping the place uh, in good condition and uh, looking after yourself and haven't been a problem. So all that counts, you know, well for you. And honestly, you know, you have to just throw yourself at the mercy of the court, which means, you know, the judge. Uh, you know, there's only the judge. There's not a panel of jurors or anything like that. <laughs> You know, because you're not fighting the case, you're making a, a deal. You're, you're accepting, you're saying, okay, I'll accept the judgment of five to 40. And they could have given me 40. They could have given me 400, but still, but you know, but uh, all things being equal, you know, the 10 went to five and then I go, okay, well, I can, I'm halfway there, you know, and, um, so my sentencing guidelines, they go by how many points you've got against you. Um, and my attorney was able to chip the points down uh, considerably by knocking out this and this and this claim um, from past stuff and things. She got it down and my sentencing guidelines went down to 63 to 78 months which, you know, 63 is five years and three months, and 78 is like, you know, six and a half years. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of time out of anybody's life, but it's, it's, you know, at least it's a reprieve from, you know, lifetime. So far, so good, anyway. And um, so I, I, you know, essentially went before the mercy of the court with a good record behind me in, in, in my time spent in. Uh, and I got, I got 63 months, you know, that was the lowest that they could give me. And um, so I'm already halfway through. Now I'm, uh, well, at that point, the, uh, you know, I'm down in, in the 
jails again, you know, after the sentencing and stuff. Oh, and they just keep me there for a month or more. You know, it's 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 grueling and terrible. You know, they're just like, you know, in the in the worst conditions. Finally, I get transported back, and of course, you know, my job, my my all my uh, superiority, you know, in, in terms of my station in in the in that facility, have gone by the board. Uh, I get a decent cell and I've only got the one celly. And uh, I, um, I'm just waiting to be transported to serve my time. And I finally, the day comes and I am transported, you know, all my uh, belongings, everything had gone by the board, you know, and um, all my books. And uh, anyway, I get transported and I'm at Sheridan, you know, the actual prison. <clears throat> now, I've been locked up for two and a half years without seeing the light of day. You know, I've, I've, I've maintained myself. I'm, you know, physically strong and, um, and you know, gone through, you know, uh, the compression of, of, uh, of, of that whole uh, ordeal. And I get to the actual prison itself prisons like a like a little inner city it's like a park they got all this land it's all green and there's flower beds and they've got you know it's like and all these buildings and you know there's kind of spread out and it's like i felt like i was released i felt like i was free you know two and a half years of compression and then i i, I was at this place i didn't stop smiling for two weeks you know it, it, it felt like i was free relative freedom so i get in and i i'm i'm put in uh put in into this um cell so you know my cell is just you know <laughs> ugly looking bastard you know he's uh you know probably you know late 30s he looks a little like psycho and uh but he's got all these books on his on his shelf and they're all these books about you know, it's Wiccans, you know? And now there's, you know, there's like Druids, Wiccans, all this kind of stuff. I'd, I've studied all, I've read books. I, you know, I had a penchant for, um, for the nature-based uh, observances of, of, you know, way of life. Call it spirituality, but that's not really a good word for it. But, um, you know, uh, just to, to have, a, you know, to live in harmony with, with nature and stuff, right? And, um, I said, so you're a Wiccan? He said, uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we, we have our own uh, coven here. I said, oh, it's a coven. He said, <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. And I said, how did that happen, you know? Um, he said, well, he said, me and this other guy, we're the only two in the, in, in the coven right oh. now, you know, it's me and this other guy. And uh, we observed that the Native, uh, the Native Americans they were all religions in the in the federal system have to be observed. This is part of our our laws, and so um, the, we observed that the native uh, uh, peoples have their fire pit and their their steam house, and you know they have this plot of land out there, outside of the, the walls, and. Um, so we decided that we were going to become Wiccans and have our own, you know, robes and candles and bells and, you know, stone altar and fire pit and oak trees. And, and I said, how did that work out? And he said, well, it took two years, but we, we have it all. <laughs> and I was like, how do I sign up? <laughs> so when I got asked what was my religion and I said, I'm a Wiccan. I used to be a born again pagan, but now I'm a Wiccan. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay then, right. Okay, nice. Wiccan. Wiccans have all these high days and holidays, you know, you know, they're all based on Christian religion because the Christian, no, that 
the Christian re religion based all their high days and holidays on, on the Wiccans, on the Druids, on, on those old religions that were uh, abroad and well in, in, in Celtic times in England and Wales and Ireland, Scotland, you know. It's like, um, uh, and <clears throat> so, you know, I get to go out I'm out, you know, out of the facility. I go out and onto the land, and they've got a fire pit, and they've got a stone altar, and they've got the oak trees. They've got, and I read up on it. They've got all the accoutrements of the rituals for, for Wiccan um, ri rituals. <laughs> ah, yeah. You can jump over the fire. You can do all this stuff. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the, you don't have any, you know, naked women, but, uh, you know, hey, you make do with what you got, right? <laughs> anyway, it was, it was awesome. kind of hilarious, you know, and, um, I, you know, I got to, you know, make use of his library of, of, of Wiccan, uh, uh, you know, intelligence, what is it, Logic. what we could call it, law, L-O-R-E, yeah, and, um, uh, and uh, so, anyway, I said, oh, well, man, you know, this is, this is super. We've got a really nice cell up here. We're in the middle of the block. We can see both ways. Um, and, uh, you know, we're up above it all. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. There could be worse places. And he said, so far, so good, right? <laughs> I said, yeah, right. So, you know. <laughs> What are, you, what are you in here for? I said, oh, excuse me. I know he, nobody asks that question. And uh, he says, well, I, I mean, I, I got five counts of murder. And I'm like, really? I said, you, you seem <laughs> reasonable to me. <laughs> he said, well, I, I'm not gonna talk about it. You know, it, it, you know, it, it gets me angry. I said, okay, well, let's not talk about that then. <laughs> I said, so I only have one question. When we go to sleep at night, it's my first day there, you know, I said, will I wake up alive in the morning? He says, well, you're not going to wake up dead. You'll be dead. <laughs> and I said, yeah, good one, yeah. We're going along great. <laughs> I'd learned a little. <laughs> and he goes, oh. okay, oh. I saw the transformation one time, somebody pissed him off and he just went over, his whole face changed and he just went, the guy turns psycho, completely psycho and he was big and he was like ugly and he turned psycho in an instant and I saw the whole transformation, I went, fuck oh, man, man, fuck, this guy is a true, you know, monster. So I'm living with the monster. <laughs> <laughs> I joined the Wiccans. <laughs> um, but, you know, I really knew more than they did, which was good. So anyway, very interesting thing. The guy that he started the, the Wiccans with, um, I got introduced to him and, uh, you know, he was younger. And uh, he, he was bright and he was, you know, happy. And I said, well, what do you, you know... When you're getting out, you know, you look you're like you're ready to get out any minute. He said, I'm always ready to get out, but I don't know if I'll ever get out, you know. Uh, and I said, you, your name seems familiar somehow. Now, when I lived in um, Inverness Park in uh, overlooking Tamales Bay in, in West Marine County, and I had this 15 acre property and grew put on that pot on the hillside. And I had this, you know, wonderful spread. Uh, I got home one day and this story had come around that my neighbor, which was not far removed from me, these are country properties, so, but, you know, it's, it's like just up the hill. This kid, he'd come home from school. I was thinking he was 17. And he'd murdered his parents and his brother and sister with an axe. Just gone berserk and you know, just killed them all. And this is that guy. Uh, <clears throat> so I, 
I'm in the company of these two Wiccans that are both absolutely multiple murderers and total psychos. <laughs> well, this is what you get when you go to prison, right? You know, don't go pot on your hillside. Did he ever say why he killed his parents? Like, killed them? Did he ever say? He said, he, I said, what's the terminology? He said, well, well, I was angry. I said, do they call that a psychotic break? He said, I don't know what that means, but, you know, they really pissed me off and I'd had enough. I was like, okay then, right. Uh, it's enough of that. <laughs> and, um, you know, my time there, I spent the whole time in the, you know, in the company of this one guy. What he'd done was even more horrendous. He, it was it was unrepeatable because he'd give you nightmares. The, the, the guy I'm selling was, you know. Just awful. Um, it's unspeakable what he did. But, you know. Nobody wanted to live with this guy. Nobody wanted to get close to the guy. And, you know, nobody wanted to get in across me because I'm living with the guy. I must be crazy. <laughs> the admin called me and they said, how are you doing with your Sally? I said, fine, you know, like he, he works in the, oh, they had a factory on the, um, in that prison, it was a, <laughs> Furniture factory, <laughs> yeah, they're making furniture. They got all kinds of tools that can kill you, you know, all kinds of, so much weaponry in that prison. You wouldn't believe it, you know. Every day they're searching and coming up with like so much stuff, right? <laughs> Crazy, you know? And, but one of the upsides of, of having the factory that, you know, so many people in the prison work for is that they have money. And so they can buy uh, stuff on commissary and they had a, an art program. And the art program, they have a 2,000 page manual. Yeah, of, of, of stuff you can buy, you know, like, you know, paint brushes and paints and 2,000 pages. You know, there's an immense amount of stuff. Anyway, um, I got the job as the art teacher at the prison. Um, you know, I said, yeah. So they let me create my own curriculum. And I had my own art room. It's like big room. It's like 40 by 40, a big room. And you know, all these benches and all this art paraphernalia. And I, I, I had a program, you know, I, I taught people about perspective and then, you know, uh, just sketching like the hand in different positions, faces, um, but uh, um, dimension and uh, um, anyway, there was, you know, it was usually a full classroom, two hours every morning. I'd get up, uh, shower, get my coffee, and, um, and go up to the art room and open up and, you know, set my, my program for the day. And, the, you know, these guys would all come in, you know, we all doodle around and stuff. One day, the, um, the guy in charge of that particular facility comes in and said, okay, we got a, I got, a, I got a, a project for you. And he, boom, he puts this big tome, this 2,000 page uh, catalog of choices that they've had in the federal system. Because yeah, in the older days, they used to have golf courses for the prisoners back then in, in Fed. You know, if, you know they, of course, they're paying for it. They're paying with their lives, you know, because they're getting man years, you know. It may not be just, but at least they you kept them happy, kind of, you know. No women, um, but um, well, they um, wanted to. The, the 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 project was to reduce this two thousand page catalog down to twenty pages, and my job as I saw it, was to facilitate amongst all those choices everything the prison needs uh, to keep people happy, you know, and that requires, you know, a number of things, you know, it, it, drawing pens, uh, colors, paper, of course, and different styles and um, paints, <clears throat> and all the way down to tattoos, which are illegal, but they need pigment that can work for tattoos. 
And my primary thing was like, well, this is a classic prison thing. I, you really do need to facilitate their ability to <coughs> have, um, uh, to do tattoos and also to have a machinery that can do them. Uh, I, what did I come up with? <coughs> Anything that rotates or vibrates or they can, they can turn into a, a tattoo machine. <clears throat> and I came up with something and I got this pigment that will work, it's non-toxic, it would last. Um, took me a long time, it took me a month or more to go through this 2,000 pages of, um, well I set my class and they all get on with the work and, and I, I work on this. And, um, <clears throat> and finally I get it all done and I got it down to the 20 pages of, um, and that's, that's set for the whole federal system nationwide I said, seriously? And I said, yeah. You know, I said, whose job is this? He said, well, they gave it to me, so I'm giving it to you. <laughs> I said, thank you, thank you very much. You know, it's like, wow, I feel so privileged. You know, well, at least I did my, my, my best to cover all of the bases that, you know, people inside might, especially, you know, when a lot of them are doing life and, you know, to, to create as, as good a, you know, condensation as I could, you know, and it's probably in, in, in operation to this very day. Uh, <clears throat> I'd no sooner got it all completed and it got approved by the governor and then it, it got adopted by the, the whole system. And, uh, and, they, and they gave this, they didn't give this guy a medal, but they gave him, you know, he, he said, yeah, they, you know, I got, I got, you know, <laughs> accolades accolades thank you for um you know getting that getting that uh down to 20 pages and i said you're welcome you know he said don't be smart with me i said fuck off <laughs> you can't talk to me i said what are you going to do lock me up yeah <laughs> fuck off <laughs> but i mean you know you've got to take your humor where you can right and he was like ah you're done good anyway next thing i know i'm getting moved did my job. Now I'm getting transported, and I was like, "Can I just get comfortable?" Well, we don't want you to be comfortable, and we want you to be, you know, suffering. You know, hey, bam, wake up and do your time, ha ha ha, assholes. You know, that's how they went. You know, I remember being, you know, along the foot of the, you know, wake up and do your time, ha ha. Fuck off, you know, you morons. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm uh, getting moved, and I get moved to um, Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, it's probably the worst place I ever was. It, you know, apart from the jails were really bad, but this is a prison. <laughs> Man, was it bad! Really bad. You know, it's hot. There's all kinds there. It's crowded more than you can believe. You know, the first couple of weeks there, I was in this makeshift room with, with uh, bunks and so crowded, you could touch the guy in the next bunks on either side of you and you're head to foot and teared up on these bunks. And um, uh, terrible conditions. <clears throat> but when I went out into the grounds, I looked around and I said, this place is a joke. You could just get out of here. And I, I can see three different ways to get out of here. Or, not without help, but you know. And um, uh, I said, you've got an open airfield right there. They said, yeah, we're gonna put all kinds of wires up there. You know, you know? Said, to stop people coming in. I said, oh, you finally got wires to it. Yeah, well, because somebody came in and, you know, picked somebody up and took them out. I said, yeah, that's what I would have done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I said, what about that? You know, I was like, nah, you, we're gonna make those higher and there's gonna be more coiled razor wire and shit like that. You know, and I was like, you guys are a joke. You know, honestly, <laughs> uh, you know, a good job. You know, most people in here don't have a brain you know, <laughs> made your job a lot easier, but honestly, what a, what a terrible place. And, um, and rough people, you know, there were people just like, they didn't give a shit. 
they were like there for life and they were like angry and they were just violent. Uh, it was a terrible place. <clears throat> and I, you know, I got, on, there was weights and I got on the weight pile and you know, I, you know, I could keep up with big guys and stuff, you know. And uh, so I was left alone because, you know, I was part of the tough crowd. Um, and, uh, and I finally got moved to, um, uh, oh, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is the hub for the entire federal system for all prisoners that are getting transported from one prison to another. And they, this giant hub in Oklahoma City. And you get processed and for the first time in the whole system, you get uh, a, a thorough medical to, you know, to see, you know, who's got what disease, you know, and t tuberculosis and all this, you know, stuff, you know, people, herds of people go in, there's a whole line of them come out with duck masks on, looking <laughs> like ducks, ducks, you know, wearing masks, like we do today, right? Ha! Huh. Anyway, um, and uh, so I get my medical, x-rays, all I can, everything. They called me and they said, <clears throat> oh, I see you have a, you know, a pleurolectomy. And I said, a pleurolectomy? I said, that, that sounds like lung removal. They said, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? And I said, really? They said, how can you get a lung removed without knowing about it? And I said, well, they didn't tell me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a pleurolectomy and they never told me. I didn't understand the language, you know, the medical language, and I didn't really care. I was alive and I was like out and I started long distance running again. I started running marathons. I always thought it was a little harder than it used to be. I'm running on one lung, you know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't grow back. The so only thing that- your accent, you had a pleurolectomy? Yeah, no. right. It wasn't a frontal lobotomy, no. you know? I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> anyway, just a little witticism there, <laughs> lighten it up. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, this is the first time I've heard of it. And it's been, how long has it been? It's been a long time. It's been going on 10 years, right? And I was like, wow. They said, how could you not know? And I said, well, they, they really didn't tell me. And I, I knew they'd done some, you know, lung repair and stuff. I had a lung specialist, but I didn't really realize that I'd, you know, I thought I was just out of shape. You know, it's a little harder to run a marathon. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, I did my time there uh, at, at that holding center and it wasn't so bad, it was, you know. And then I get sent to the last stage of the journey. Oh, was that the last one? Oh God, I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure you all do too. And it was called Eden, Eden in Texas. Well, Eden was like the piss hole of the federal system in the whole system. And it's like, you know, in the middle of the fucking desert in some part of, of Texas and it was privately run, you know. I think they were they, they, they were running, you know, their man years for, you know, 12, 15,000 a year and they're getting paid, you know, 30. And the feds were making, you know, an extra 10 grand plus the 40 for nothing, you know, um, <clears throat> out of the 40. And, um, you know, and yeah, another weak place that, you know, is, I could see several ways to bust out of, but then you're in the middle of a desert and there's nowhere to go. <laughs> you couldn't make it to anywhere, you know? It's like, it's a desert. And um, I was like, well, you know, and I had 18 months yet left yet. And uh, so that was my remaining time was in Eden, Texas. Now, Oh, one of the things that I did uh, earlier in uh, in Sheridan was we started a rock and roll band, so I'm entertained. I had a captive audience, of course, you know, so it was pretty cool here. And um, uh, so here I am now in my last. I've got 18 months, and I I started a rock and roll band, and so we're entertaining the the guys, and they're all deportees. This is a an installation for. Um, it's medium high. And uh, and they reinforced after I got there, you know, and they, 
I could see so many ways to get out of there, but like, like I said, you're in the middle of a desert. And um, <clears throat> they reinforced it all and beefed it up. And, um, but it was, so it was really a medium to medium high because there's all kinds of grades of, of crime that had gone through, but they're all being deported. So it wasn't, they're not being kept for, you know, 20 you know, years or life or something. So it can't be that bad, but you know, <clears throat> Um, mostly Hispanics. There was a few island boys, you know, black guys from from the islands, and they're, they're lovely people, you know. I, um, and there's just a handful of whites. There's a Russian, uh, South African, uh, Persian, a uh, me, uh, and uh, another Englishman. I think a Cockney guy. Anyway. Um, Oh yeah, there was another step in between that I missed, another facility, and that was a whole other story, but you know, I'll just keep going so we can get out, out of here. And uh, so that 80, and now I, I got up every morning and I did, you know, a two and a half hour yoga session in, in, the, in the, you know, after breakfast, you get a, a, a basketball room and I take a corner and, I, and uh, pretty soon I had, you know, a dozen people that were following me. You know tough you know people love yeah, 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 sissy stuff and I said okay I, you know I challenge you to join us and keep up with us you know m almost nobody could uh, actually nobody could they had to get stronger and stronger it, it was a tough uh, you know exercise the yoga thing and um, and then um, they had a perimeter track which wasn't very big but it, you could go around lots of times and get get a run uh, they had a weight pile and um, uh, they, they had classes that you could learn to type, which I, I attended, so I could learn to type. You can't get online, there's no such thing in prison, um, but you could learn to type and, and you could take a course on how to operate uh, 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 an online system, which I learned. Um, I started rocking over. So I'm entertaining the, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the men so I had my captive audience and uh, haha, it, it, there, you know, and I helped people with their legal work and writing home and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, there, a lot of things that went, went along with that 18 months, a long time, you know, there's lots of stories in there, but I'm going to get out and I finally reached my release date and, and uh, Getting out is was a process, and I'll we'll get into the next because we're over our time. All right. <clears throat> wow, that was great. Do you realize this is our thirty ninth episode? Wow, it's about time I get out. Thirty ninth episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's going to be more. There it is. So stay tuned. We'll be coming back with our fortieth. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank Thanks for you. Tuning in. Yeah. Thanks, Courtney. And subscribe. Yes, I think it's first like time and I subscribe. That. I know. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys.